Bon qui qui je m'appelle Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com, your reigning and defending Cultaholic Heavyweight Champion, and welcome to all these AEWTF moments from this week's Cole on Dynamite, and once again, it's a bloody good show, isn't it? We had a fantastic tag team match to kick off the night, we had Dustin Rhodes beating Sammy Guevara, which for me is a bit weird, because it's Sammy Guevara, come on! Then we had Britt Baker's promo game sort of going back up after a massive dip last week. Nyla Rose is now the champion with her teeny tiny little belt. They need a new one, don't they? We had a lovely match with MJF and Jungle Boy. Then we had a lovely hard-hitting affair in the main event with the debut appearance of Jeff Cobb in AEW, proving that AEW still can't do debuts very well. More on that later. Hit the intro. Well, the fella holding that sign there is a massive dickhead, isn't he? Unless, of course, that sign there is a reference to something that I don't know, which is a distinct possibility, because I am 57 years of age. But if it's not, and that sign there is saying what it looks like it's saying, it's not really Jim's fault, is it? So you, my friend, can shove that sign up your arsehole, you massive cockwomble. So according to that graphic there, Kenny Omega has never, ever, ever had a single alcoholic beverage in his entire life. And I don't know how that's possible. It's unbelievable. Every single child got given a little bit of wine by their mom on a random Saturday night, watching Ant and Dec Saturday Night Takeaway and then Pop Idol when they were about eight years old, didn't they? Everyone around the world, surely Kenny Omega included. It's um, I don't know what to make of it. Now I slowed this right down and Frankie Kazarian's mitt is touching the bottom rope when Bryce's hand hits the mat for the count of three. Now he didn't have a full fist of rope like he ended up having, but skin was definitely touching rope. But I do have to say, it was marvelously done by every single person involved. It was that close, when you're watching at full speed, you couldn't tell the difference. But I'm telling you, if VAR was involved in AEW today, for my money, that match would have been forced to continue. But this entire finish lends itself to another rematch, doesn't it? Because Eric can go away. I had my finger on the rope. They can go no, no you didn't. Frankie Kazarian go, yeah, I want a rematch. And I'm on board with that because that opening match last night, it was great, wasn't it? And then we had the big tag team standoff ahead of the big tag team thing on next week's Call on Dynamite. And when the Young Bucks took to the ring, Jim Ross screamed at the top of his lungs, it's the Bucks of Youth. And of course, at this moment, we were all asking ourselves, who the hell used to call the Young Bucks the Bucks of Youth? Ah! I'm getting flashbacks. It's Matt Hardy, of course. So we see Matt Hardy tweeting goodbye after this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. We see Evil Uno tweeting a little bit of the Beatles. That didn't work. And then we have Jim Ross dropping that reference there on this week's call on Dynamite. Matt Hardy to the Dark Order. Yeah. Chris Jericho has ass herpes. Pass it on. Not like Chris Jericho obviously passed on the ass herpes to Sammy Guevara, but just tell a friend, make them aware, you know what I mean. Now I fully understand that referee's discretion is a thing in professional wrestling, but Aubrey Edwards, Sammy Guevara, twatted Dustin Rhodes upside the head with a picture of a human's head. And if that's not a foreign object in the midst of a standard singles professional wrestling matchup, I don't know what is. If that picture of that head there was Samoan, Dustin could have been killed because professional wrestling has told us that. You all know that, don't we? And next up, we have Dustin Rhodes claiming that Jake Hager, the savior of five-star wrestling, is failing at an MMA career. And even though, as you can see right there, Mr. Jake Hager is showing no emotion on his face, you just know the noise that was ringing inside his head when Dustin claimed that. Huh? Two monumental wins over the best of the best that the MMA world has to offer. MMA. <laughs> and then he has a no contest, Dustin, which he didn't even want to win anyway, which was shown when he hoofed a man right in the nads. It's going well. And then we have good old JR saying that he would love to see Mr. Jake Hagar, as Chris Jericho would say, against Dustin Rhodes like he's never seen it before. And when Jim Ross said that, I was thinking, hang on there a second, I'm sure I've seen Jack Swagger versus Goldust more times than I've had hot dinners, and I've had a few hot dinners in my time. 
but it turns out they've only ever had one singles match in the WWE, which aired on Christmas Day 2013, and that monumental affair took place on Main Event the home of all the best wrestles. But isn't it weird thinking that here we are in the year 2020, we've basically got gold dust against Jack Swagger, and that's a pay-per-view caliber match that I'm really looking forward to. I just love storytelling, professional wrestling. It's wonderful when it works, isn't it? And to add another layer to the onion that this feud is becoming, we have to add in that Dustin Rhodes won that match on main event back in 2013. So here goes, out for revenge. Go on. And next up we have Dr. Britt Baker saying we can only assume that Yuka Sakazaki does not have health insurance. And when the good doctor said that, I was thinking, whoa, let's go all the way back to the start of 2019. Wasn't there a big hoo-ha on the interweb about how AEW were going to offer their wrestlers health insurance compared to WWE who offer health insurance to the people who work inside Titan Towers behind the desk? but not to the people who break their backs every single day. I thought that was a thing, but it turns out it's not. I did a big old Google. I looked at two whole pages of Google results, and the results, they are conflicting. Somebody tell me if AEW do offer health insurance to their wrestlers so we can we can put Britt Baker right if we need to. And don't I feel like more of a twat than I normally do because my Fight TV feed went absolutely kaput during a massive women's championship match on coal on dynamite it was gone for two or three minutes and i've been stood here saying if you've got access to fight tv and you don't watch it you're a massive numpty and i've got no idea if this was the same thing on tnt let me know if it was but people watching on fight we've been let down haven't we and then we get to jim ross calling nyla rose the king of the mountain after she won the title and i doubt he meant anything malicious by that, he just could have picked anything else to say in the entire world than what he did there. It was just a thoughtless bit of commentary. How am I, Jim? And then we get to that shot there, and we're all saying it, aren't we? They need a bigger title. And I know that some people might be liking the throwback aspect of the AEW Women's Championship belt, but nah, we've moved on, haven't we? Tiny belts, they're a thing of the past. Let's get a big one, why the hell not? Now I'm fully with Nyla Rose here because even though Tony Khan is her boss, you're never going to accept a hug from a man who's wearing a coat like that. I don't know about you, but I'm just imagining Tony Khan being bollock naked below that thing. So when he leaves the arena after Curl on Dynamite, he can walk down the street, see some people and flash them. You've got a bit of money, Tony Khan. Get yourself down to Burton, Matalan, and get yourself a new coat, man. How are you? Those are her contenders, Tony Schiavone said. And I'm looking at Lever Bates there and thinking, Tony, she's a contender. Is that too harsh? No, I don't think it is. Le she's not a contender. And then we had the sort of weird debut thing of Jeff Cobb halfway through the show last night and I'm starting to think that AEW after the Butcher and the Blade and stuff like that do not know how to do debuts anymore. We have fallen a long, long way from the debuts of John Moxley, obviously, and Jake Hagar the best one. So while Chris Jericho was doing that there promo and he said Jeff Cobb's coming next week, I was thinking why when you've got a name like Jeff Cobb with name value to it, would you just throw it away in the middle of a promo like that? So during that promo Jericho was saying we've got this hit man, we've got this big sweaty man who will kill you John Moxley, why not just leave it at that? So when this big sweaty hit man arrives and everybody sees it's Jeff Cobb, everybody recognises Jeff Cobb don't they? That would be way more impactful than just throwing out his name in the middle of a promo. I thought it was weird. Like, just take your minds to the last segment of last night's Call on Dynamite and just imagine the moment where Chris Jericho throws up to the stage. Imagine if we didn't know it was Jeff Cobb coming, so when the music hits and the Tron shows his name, the Poppington that would have happened there. It was sort of muted a little bit because we all knew Jeff was coming. I thought, it, yeah, just weird when it's backwards. A sign in support of MJF. This name bloody time run away. The end is now. The end is night. Time to run away. The end is night. Night. Wrestlers have to watch TV at funny angles because of reasons. I cannot believe this is a thing that happened on AEW 
after the entire world, for years now, has taken the piss out of WWE for doing the same thing. First of all, good on Excalibur for calling out that bollocks and giving us a little bit of a laugh. But you got to question why they would do that in the first place when they know the entire world takes the piss out of WWE for doing the same thing. Now, I've done no research for this claim, but I reckon they must have done it on being the elite in the past. E, I've driven across that bridge, me. E, I've walked along that path, me. E, we had our Christmas party right where that red arrow is pointing. And the weird thing is for there to be no taxis whizzing across the swing bridge, for there to be no people whatsoever on the quayside, side, for there to be no people whatsoever on the street known as the side. Pack must be doing these promos at like half past five in the morning, maybe earlier, maybe at 4.56 in the morning on a random Wednesday or something, when there's not too much going on in town. He truly is a mental bastard. But hey, at least he's got his clothes on this week, which is Geordie-ish for clothes. So we get to that eye for an eye main event and the thing started with a massive brawl that went into the crowd, meaning the ring bell could not be rung to start the match. Tony Schiavone made a note of this on commentary when he said, way the bell hasn't sounded, these lads could get away with anything. But there we see Ortiz, massive sock and ball thing in hand, he just stands there and does nothing. And we've heard it so many times during AEW's short but tenured history, Chris Jericho keeps calling Santana and Ortiz these no good street thugs. He's just standing there. They're just law-abiding, lovely, lovely boys, aren't they? And to make things worse, halfway through the actual match, then Ortiz gets on the ring apron and goes to use his sock thingy, but you know, it doesn't work out. But why did he not use it when the bell hadn't rung and they could get away with anything? I don't want to do my hands today. They're going all over the place. And that is it for your WTF moments from this week's Colon Dynamite. New Women's Champion, debut of Jeff Cobb, lovely matches, lovely promos from Prip Baker once again. It was good, wasn't it? Roll on next week. And coming to the channel this weekend, we have the second ever Cultaholic Championship Challenge where I go up against Tom Campbell in a series of random things. Just, the, just at the start of the year, we had top trumps. This time, we're doing some basketball inning. Let me tell you, I've got some newfound respect for basketballers because that's that stuff, it is hard. This weekend on the channel. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can play us to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.